Okay. Okay, Donna. So why don't we, um, do you want me to start or I get, if you have questions, I have answers. Sure. Go for it. You can start for sure. Okay. Well, I, uh, I have been really interested in trying to get some of the uh, students that I have in my pre-apprenticeship program. I have an apprenticeship and a pre-apprenticeship program, not only with the DAS, um, but with the Department of Labor. And okay. our standards are in digital media editing. So we're looking to put people to work who are going to be working not on theory or not on concepts, but on real projects. Some of them have disabilities um, that uh, range from things that have not been tested for, but we know mm -hmm. that they have uh, some uh, processing issues and but are still in, in community college and for university. Um, so I think what we're really looking to do is to get a lot of the people tested so that we can assess their um, their strengths and weaknesses. Is that something that you guys could do or do you see that as that a feasible first start to try and start uh, assessing people? All right, so our organization, we ourselves don't necessarily assess, but we do work with DOR. So um, let me let me start, maybe I should introduce the programs first because if I introduce them to you, they do all come together and make a little bit more sense to, maybe it would answer most of your questions, honestly. Okay, yeah, so why don't you tell us what the features and benefits of the program are so that I, yeah. can, see if I can match up our constituency with yeah. those things. Okay, great. So in regards to the youth, we have three different programs. Um, the first program is called WIOA, which is funded by the government. And that is given to all students uh, within the ages of 16 to 24. Okay. So WIOA is a program that works with all students uh, that don't have a IEP that don't have a disability. So if you have any students that don't fall uh, fall under the required IEP or disability, then you will be able to enroll them under, um, you'll be able to enroll them under WIOA. Okay. And so you can enroll them in the other program, which is uh, Youth to Work. Youth to Work right. is, is a program that is similar to the WIOA program in characteristics and in eligibility. Now, in regards to specifically to the students that have disabilities, we have a program called STEPS. STEPS is a program that is funded by, um, with the help of DOR, and it's directly related to students that have IEPs. So okay. if a student is has a disability and they are under the DOR and they're get, getting benefits, um, that is the program for them. They do get different hours, a little bit different hours than the youth at work and than the uh, WIOA program. And they also get paid differently by DOR. Okay, so let me ask a question. So I have had people um, paid through WIOA mm -hmm. through youth work source centers. Um, so that's what you guys are. You guys are a youth work source center, much like some of the ones with the city of Los Angeles. And so the ones that are 16 to 24 that get paid through WIOA, what are the hourly, um, what's the hour allotment and what is the wage uh, scale for those people in WIOA? Yes, so right now we're doing minimum wage of sixteen ninety. Okay. And that applies for youth at work as well. Okay, so all right, so we owe and youth at work are sixteen to twenty four, sixteen ninety. How many hours do they get per per session or per per engagement? Yeah, so per enrollment, uh, they get a total of one hundred sixty hours, mm -hmm. but the one hundred sixty hours are not fully at the site. We take twenty of them for what we call blueprint training where okay. they get um, a little bit more information about how to talk to employers, the right way to um, behave at a work uh, workspace, how to dress, a little bit about bank accounts, a little bit about it, like the overall um, payments and stuff like that, that they will need to know before going to the workplace. Okay, so you do 20 hours of that training at a site that you guys host? Yes, yeah, so they can either do it online um, or they can do it in one of our in-person sessions. Okay. What well, where where would your in-person sessions be? Uh, what's the ge geographic area? They're usually in our Inglewood One Stop office. Okay, Inglewood One Stop. Okay. Yeah. All so right. So that's usually where the. Mm -hmm. 
Right, but if they did them online, um, you would do a Zoom or would it be a Microsoft Teams? No, it actually will be independent. They will do it by themselves on a specific program that um, oh, or a specific okay. platform. Yes, so okay. if it is online, it's not something that we do like that in, where we participate. It's fully um, pre-programmed and they can do it by themselves. Right, so self-paced. So once they finish the uh, online part of it, do they get a certification for it or they just yes. get a pass or fail? No, they get a certification for it. And that certification has to be sent to their case manager. Um, and we get alerted that this, this specific student just completed the online training. And that's how we can place them. None of the students will be able to be placed at your center if they did not, or like with you at your organization, if they have not completed blueprint and if they don't have all the required uh, documents to be enrolled in, our, in one of our programs. So okay. none of them would actually be able to start getting paid unless we have them uh, cleared to start from their case manager, which okay. is something that we coordinate among us. And then we keep the work site um, informed about that too. Okay, so if I had, let's say I had 10 people ready to go right now, um, the first step would be them taking the online, um, you know, pro, uh, uh, online assessment, not assessment, online for the 20 hours. And then they would go through those 20 hours to be assessed by a case manager, could be you or Anea, and then they would be um, capable of doing the 140 hours with me. So how it works is that, for example, let's say that you have a suggested student, right? And mm -hmm. let's just say, um, because Anisha is more uh, well-versed into how to do the STEPS program, uh, that is her specialty. Mine is more of the WIOA and the Cal, uh, the Youth at Work. So let me just tell you a little bit more about how it would go for a Youth at Work student, okay? okay. So let's say that you have a 17-year-old who's interested in working. They first will have to come to our office they have to meet eligibility criteria for them to be with us at the Inglewood One Stop. So there are different requirements for those students. Uh, once One requirement is that they have to be within our service area, the South Bay Workforce Investment Board service area. Right, that, and where's, where's the geographical um, cutoff for that area? Yeah. Of so that area. would be Inglewood, Hawthorne, Gardena, Torrance, Beach cities in the in the Torrance area. So we're talking about like Manhattan Beach, Lamita, um, Redondo Beach, and then Carson, of course, Gardena. Um, we said Inglewood, we said Hawthorne. Um, so those are mo mostly the cities that we work with. And those are the students that will be qualified for our programs through us. For, for the WIOA and the youth, um, youth, youth work. work. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay, yeah, because I talked to Anea about some of the students I have currently working who are in South LA. Yes, now yeah. Anea's program is different. Anea's yeah. STEPS program specifically for students with IEPs and disabilities, their um, enrollment is a little bit different than ours. Mm -hmm. Their requirements and their um, eligibility is different than ours. That's why for that specific program, I will have Anea explain it a little bit more uh when she when she hops on the meeting maybe next time okay uh, but in regards to my youth at work and my WIOA, that is the criteria they have to be living in one of our cities for them to qualify okay and you said 17 but it starts really at 16 right um it starts at 16 yes yeah. so i just gave you an example let's okay. say that he is 17. so yeah so once we get them let's say that they live in hawthorne they're eligible we can have them be in our programs once that is through and once we check the eligibility they will come fill out a packet and that it has to be signed by their parents or their guardian once they complete all the documents provide us with the necessary id social security number birth certificate um they have to go through the blueprint training once they complete blueprint training they are uh good to go and they will be able to join your we can place them at your work site okay but none of the students are able to start work before they have submitted all the documents and completed the blueprint. Sure, I got it. I yeah, I'm I'm working with the Youth Work Source Center for the City of LA. So yeah. I've taken quite a few people through the city yeah. program. Very similar. Mm -hmm. Pretty familiar with the uh the process. Now do you have a sister 
organization or a place that you could recommend for people who are in South LA? That Actually, are right South LA have their own, um, I believe by the college, South LA College, I think it's called, or um, they have their own work source center for that specific area where the youth can go. Mm -hmm. I know that their funding is limited though. I know that they are a little bit less funded than us. Okay. Um, so how many students they can enroll and how many students they can have uh, for the youth at work program and not for WIOA, but for the youth at work, we can actually enroll some students if we have the funding that are not within our city. Um, but I believe that how, we many, how many could you because I have I have a cohort of 10 people right yeah. now. That, yeah, live that's the thing. LA, that live right on the border of, 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 you know, I mean, really, it's interesting because some parts of L.A. are farther and deeper into South L.A. or South Central L.A. than they are in um, Inglewood. I mean, so Inglewood yeah. is like right next door to some parts of L.A. And then you yeah. go to another area and then it's like 30 more, you know, streets over and it's yes. you know, L.A. So it's really weird. I know. Um. For those students specifically, to be honest with you, I would want to say that um, there is not a specific limit. The problem is that if we have a lot of students from Inglewood, we will not accept anyone outside, per, per example. Right, you know so you I mean? have a priority for the Inglewood yes. students. Okay. Yes, that's why we usually refer from enrolling anyone that's outside of our cities, just so we can give the opportunity for Perfect. those that are already in here. Right. What is when 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 is your enrollment window so that you know what kind of load you have that would extend potentially to other people outside of the area? Yeah, uh, for the most part, we our window is kind of more on the open side. Uh, but one the problem with us is the funding. So once funding is out, though we enrolled students, they won't be placed until funding comes back in. Right. Okay. Well, uh, I've got some people that are actually at uh, Compton College and Compton um, Unified School District. So would they would they qualify? Um, that is a good question. I will double check with the Gardena office because I know they're the ones that mostly handle Compton students. Mm -hmm. So let me double check with Gardena to see how far in that would be. And I will also check with the managers to see where Gardena falls under the, I mean, where Compton falls under the spectrum. Okay, so um, right now Inglewood, Inglewood is the, um, the the farthest north that you guys go um, for a city that would uh, qualify. And now are these people who are enrolled in a program? So I have 16 to 24 year old people, right? And mm -hmm. so if, what if they're out of college, but they're, you know, they live in Inglewood, they have an Inglewood address, mm -hmm. residence, residence. Yeah. yeah, so we do have programs that are for out of use, out of school use. Um, so no problem with enrolling them in as long as they meet the the, the criteria. For the most part, most people that live in Inglewood would fall under the uh, low income status. Sure. And those students kind of is like an automatic approval. We still need to double check everything for them. But for the most part, if they do live in our city, even if they are out of out of school use, that doesn't mean that they don't qualify. Our students don't have to be in school as long as they are within the age range and eligibility um, appropriate. Got it. Got it. Okay. And are your eligibility um, checklists, is that something that you could send to me? Uh, yeah, we can definitely. I can send you the PowerPoint that has all the information on what we need as an eligibility list. Okay. And then you can take a look at it. It's really not that complicated. If if the student falls under low income, uh, they are approved for the age range or they live in within our cities, that's kind of an automatic approval. Got it. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. So we've got two programs, 16 to 24, WIOA and Youth work, yes. work Source. Okay. All right. Great. I, and I, I pretty much understand those things. Now, let's say the person exhausts the 100 and 40 hours from me, is there a, um, so there's, so that they go through that first, let's say tranche of money, one, uh, 140 for me, 20 for you. Is there mm -hmm. anything that extends beyond that in any particular case? Let's say somebody is a little, they're not, you know, with an IEP uh, or disability, but they're, you know, they just need a little bit more time. So once they're finished, are they out of any resources or are they, is there any chance to get them any extension? 
So uh, it wouldn't be an extension. It would be called a re-enrollment. Um, we don't necessarily love re-enrollments, but if that's the case and the work sites really likes the students and they think that they have the potential maybe for a direct hire, um, we will not mind the re-enrollment. We don't really love it, as I mentioned. We try to give the students all different opportunities just because all of our students come from different backgrounds and we are trying to give the opportunity for as many students to gain a lot of experience as possible. Got so, it. Okay. um. That's the main reason behind not really liking re-enrollment. But if the case is for a specific student, we might be able to re-enroll them. Okay, got it. Okay. Um, all right. So do you have any more features and benefits of the um of your two programs? Because I, I I'm pretty familiar with how we can matriculate people through the 140 hours to get them at least placed or get them on a uh 1099, if not, the, not a W-2 for our company, because, you know, with uh, our pre-apprenticeship program, they do get a heavy dose of experiential learning, not theory. So either uh -huh. they do the work or they can't. Um, I will have to double check that, especially for the IEP students. That is something with steps. Um, I think Anisha would have a better answer for you than me in regards to that specific um, topic, but I will definitely double check and get back. Okay. Yeah. And and I think with the STEPS program, we have people um, that are currently enrolled with us as um, apprentices that are um, Department of Apprenticeship Standards and the DOL uh, mm -hmm. EPA who are still within the 24-year-old range. We, um, so you you actually answered one question, I think about assessment or testing. Um, yes. So what agency or what um, what do you do to get the people? I know with STEPS is, is an AIA, but um, if they are to be tested, do they go to, um, do they go through a, a system where they're tested or they're assessed, tested, and is that something that you know anything about in terms of how we could um, measure their progression towards taking their disability and being able to give them any certification that says that they they're not you know clear to that disability, but they can still work with a disability? Yes. Yeah, so I do know that we provide some services for the youth in regards to the disability uh, portion of it. I know that Anasia refers people to DOR, the Department of Rehabilitation, where they will be able to obtain um, specific documentations indicating that they do have a disability. I am not necessarily or like 100% sure on um, how that process goes in regards to us referring students. But if they don't have an IEP, I believe that Anasia does work with them to help them get the IEP by referring them to the Department of Rehabilitation. Now, how the process there goes, how do they measure it, anything like that, to be honest with you, I don't want to give you the wrong information. I am not the you know expert on that field, but I do know that we work closely with the with DOR and they are the ones that assist the students to obtain the IEPs and do the follow-ups. I also know that DOR, once you're enrolled with them, they do give you certain benefits that the students might like. Um, and they give them certain certifications and documents that will help them too. Okay. But to be honest with you, that is 100% an Asia question in regards to steps. Um, she will give you more information. Hopefully she is back by next week. If you would like to jump in on a quick sure. meeting again with her, that's an option too. Yeah, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking that I would like to do a... Um you know, potentially a workshop. I'm also involved with an organization that um, is called California Jobs First. It is a, it used to be called the um, Community Economic uh, Relief uh, Resilient Fund. Um, so it's kind of a, a high roads training collaboration grant that I, I'm sitting on a steering committee for how we can help uh, identify resources to help um, the community-based organizations who are part of the HRTC uh, understand um, best practices and all the things they can to get them into a pipeline program yes. like the um, pre-apprenticeship and apprenticeship programs. 
So let me ask you, are, are there any resources for the work sites for getting um, like um, training reimbursement or any grants to help them um, with any costs like field trips or equipment or anything like that? Um, if they are in our WIOA program and if they are approved and the apprenticeship is sent through us, I do know that we do provide them with some services in regards to reimbursement for clothing. I know some tools could be approved, but that apprenticeship or that specific program, I believe that we have to be the ones to send the students to it. So if it's not within all, if it's not paid for by us, or if it's not on our iTrain program and those students were referred to that specific uh, program through us, then I'm not sure if we are able to provide all the supportive services for them. Maybe the clothing would be okay, uh, but anything else like tools or anything um, a little bit on the pricier side or the more expensive or uh, training specific, that could be a potential no if we are not the ones to send the students to that program. Right, what about transportation? Uh, yes, we do help out with transportation. Uh, we don't necessarily pay for gas, but we are able to provide uh, some sort of a uh, subsidized uh, cards for public transportation. I do know that we have that an option, but not all students use it. I can double check and see more about transportation with Viola. Okay. And so so is there food, health care, um, or, well, not health care. Well, you know, I guess you guys can refer them to um, you know, medical or any health services, but so about... that's the thing with eligibility. If they are already under the low income, uh, you know, bracket, then they probably are under LA Care or they are receiving food stamps or they are under welfare. Their programs are in a gain or a grow. I mean, their parents are in a gain or a grow program already, which is um you know, which is the programs that already support them with food and well, already support well, them. With and, and I guess why I was going to ask, what about those people who are somewhat emancipated and don't have any support from their their parents' um, services? Mm -hmm. Okay, so there is a county program that is for adults. Um, we don't support by providing food. Uh, those specifically, those adults, if they are within the adults which they have to be if they are emancipated, I assume. You cannot be emancipated if you're not at a certain age. Correct yeah, me if I'm yeah, wrong. If they're, if they're 18, well, well oh yeah, yeah. I, I'll find out what, you know, because we have a couple of people who don't have any parents. They're homeless. They don't have any, they're basically abandoned. But they're yeah. trying to go to community college or they're just trying to pull themselves up either through the bootstrap. Mm -hmm. What about those people? So we definitely provide them with case management services. Uh, that include like referring them to training programs or providing them direct hires. But I am not, I don't, we do refer, we can help them with uh, sending them to EDD and uh, maybe they can help them with the financial aspect of it. We do work with a couple homeless shelters that we can refer them to. But aside of that, we don't really provide like, here's some money for food. Like we don't right, do right. Okay. that. I understand. That is more for the county programs to, you know, come in and um, provide those services to the students. But us, no, we don't. Yeah, we're I was, not I was, that I was just thinking more about the case managers and their knowledge of mm -hmm. all the things that these people may have individually in terms of needs to stay connected to the 140 hours. Because yeah, you know, if there's yeah. food disparities or insecurities or shelter insecurities, then they're gonna really not be able to, you know, compete for or not compete or complete the the work assignment sometimes. So yes. just, just thinking about that, you know. Um just letting you know this this is an only 40 minute meeting. Zoom is gonna kick me out in a little bit, but okay. I should mention that. Um I will definitely give you more information on what kind of services we can provide to the students. Um, and I can send you that in an email. Okay, great. So can you um, can you send me the recording of this as well as, um, do you have my email address? I can put it in the chat. Yes, I do have it. Okay, yeah. So send me um, the recording and also the eligibility requirements for your two programs. I, I have the um, uh, enrollment eligibility requirements for the STEP program. So. Okay. 
they have uh, sent those. And thank you very much, Donna. I appreciate of you. Course. Yes, of course. Thank you so much for your time. And I will send you the recording with the other information now. Okay. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Have a good one. Bye.